The reference of the answer is based on the Chachamims. Not only the Chachamims say this, Kol Masha Olu Chachamim Chatsas, Mitzvotam Ajvi'ala Amadashah. Anything which refers to the limit being until Chatsas, the actual mitzvah, is until Amadashah. Hekta Chalovin Ve'evorin, burning of fats and limbs, Mitzvotam Ajvi'ala Amadashah. The the door just a bit. There's a couple of things here. There's another one. Chol chol ane chol ve'al echad into a son achiyam or shachar. Anything which can be eaten until midnight actually can be eaten until or shachar. In in can if so, lama haluch chol ve'al chasos. What does chol say until chasos? Kidei alchik or domin alve. In order to distance a person from him. Bravo. Very nice. That's great. How many statements were there? <laughs> and there's a question, first of all, the main. Well, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's count the statements. Let's go back. You know, no, no, because we have to make sure we understand what we're talking about. Uh, okay. yeah. Basically, the whole the whole theme is centers around creation of night, and the, the question, the initial question. What are the so? You said well, the minister. What are the preliminary ideas first? So the preliminary idea is that the fact is that there is a chiyuv of Krishna. That's one. And that, that one of the times, at least one of the times of reading it, the chiyuv is at night. That's the second thing. And there's a time limit within which, or there's a time span within which there's a chiyuv. This chiyuv applies. And the Mishnah starts off by, at least for our gifts, so explicitly asking from when. From when do we read the Shema? And the answer which is given, it actually provides you not only from when it's given, but until when. Okay, wait. Okay, let's go. Uh, the truth is there are six preliminary ideas. And those are important because from them you can begin to learn our structure. Okay. What's the first preliminary idea? Does it require a Sishma? One. What's the requirement to do what? To say the Shema. Okay, there are two ideas in what you just said. Yeah. Split it. Uh-huh. And this and this is an important concept. For, for st- what constitutes the Shema? What? What constitutes the Shema? Oh, uh, the Shema yeah. text. Uh, okay. The text itself. Mm-hmm. Right? And the second? Korean. Recitation. Mm-hmm. There you are. Mm-hmm. One is the object and the other is the action. You always want to split yeah. it into Right? You want to split a Mishnah. What exactly is the object of the Mitzvah? Mm-hmm. There are all kinds of halachas regarding the object itself. Mm-hmm. Then there's the action on that object. Well, what do I do? Mm-hmm. For instance, sukkah. What's the object? Sukkah. sukkah. And what's the action? Building. Who? No. To dwell. Residence. Or dwell. Correct. And you see the difference. That's why there are two different areas. And because of that, you now begin to structure to realize that there are two different things going on. One is the text, and the other is the recitation or the performance. That's called the action of the performance. Those are two major categories in any mitzvah, and we we're doing it here. That's going to help us see a lot of ideas later on. Is the mission dealing with the object, or is it dealing with the action? Uh, Rabbi, are these these are. Really- that's um, okay. By yeah. themselves, these are part of the obligation, the act, the object, and the act. Of the, uh, yeah, well, the, yeah, well, yeah. That's part of the obligation, and that goes for every one of the PI. Any one of the what? The PI. The, the, the preliminary idea. Yeah. What about, yeah. What? <clears throat> Understanding what what the object is, what the and what subject, and the what action. For each the one of them. Yeah, because each one is a different yeah, category. Okay, that's excellent. See, we're already beginning to categorize. What do we really know? We just know Kriya Shema. But Kriya Shema is two things. There's a text, which is the object, and there's an action, which is the recitation. Two important categories. Okay. That's okay. That's so the first idea is what? This is a text called Shema, and there is an action called recitation, or Kriya. Number three. I'm a little gray about this. Who? I'm a little in the gray area about this because we have another factor that it seems to be that we're only going to be saying this Kriyat Shema in Tefillah. 
It's, it's not just the Zman of Kriyachma, it's also yeah. where, where is this mitzvah being done? It, it, it's within tefillah. So how, how, do I, how do I... Okay, I mean, you know, what is its context? You could, well, not into but, that. but, but, but I want to know what the matzah is. I want to know what the, what the situation is right now. Fine, okay. You could do that. You could put down as, uh, hopefully you'll be able to figure that out. But we're not, uh -huh. we're not looking now at what's called its context. Where is it? You know what I'm saying? Or what is it associated with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not into that now. Okay? Because okay? you, know, you could know it. That's good. But we're not, you know, that's going to take us too far away. Right. Okay. We, we want to focus on Kriya Shema. So we've got object and action. What's next? Time. Who? Time. No. 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 Obligation. Is it Minatur in the dark or not? What is it? Oh my goodness. Well, what is this? So we now know that there's a, what, a mitzvah. Yeah, but what's the authority of this mitzvah? Mm -hmm. Is it, right? Is it Minatur in the dark or not? And if it's Minatur, you know, what? is Minatura, because there are several sections. Mm -hmm. You see, we could have analyzed, okay, especially when you do this, okay, what is the text of Shema? I mean, this mission doesn't deal with that, but just as a, just to orient ourselves, well, what are we talking about? We're talking, what is the text? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the are mm -hmm. nice that are going to deal with the text. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to split them, you know? Okay, but certainly one know, well, is this Minatura or Midra mm -hmm. Is it biblical or rabbinical? That's three. Four. Four. This Nine. is all before you get to the Mishnah. Uh, Four. Time. Who? Time. No. 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 The what goes before time? What? what? No. Who? No. What's interesting about Kriyashma? It's a mitzvah. What's interesting about it? And you need to know that idea first. Is Kavana? No. How hey, is it performed? Who? Every How day. is it performed? No. Every day? Every day. Twice a day. Twice a day. It's frequency. frequency. Yeah, how frequent? Okay. It's critical for the first Mishnah. Right? It's frequency. It's interesting. It's frequency is twice. Right? Oh, okay. Now, what's next? We know it has to be done twice. What's next? When? Now, when, Who? Those, when, are, when? when are those two? When? And the answer is, is an evening and there's a morning. There you are. That's five. You see? Six. The, the, the time zone of the evening. I would, I, I, I would have said, is this frequency? Is it a time period or a time just, point? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because if it's a time point, one thing. But if it's a time period, mm -hmm. what does the time period have to have? A beginning and an end. There you are. See? Yeah, something is, is a point, and that's it. There's no beginning or end. Time arrives, say it, you know, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. But this is not, this is a whole period of time mm -hmm. that you can observe this commandment. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what do we have? Text. Action, derivation, yes, frequency, it's a time period as opposed to a time, well actually it's morning and evening, that's the frequency. It's not a time point, it's a time period, which is number six, and beginning and end of each time period, which is number seven, and that is a central idea, number seven. Mm -hmm. What is the beginning and the end of the evening time period of the action on Shema. Mm -hmm. That exactly tells us what is the CI of this Mishnah. What's the central idea? Time period. What is uh, the beginning and the end period? Of the evening time period. That's it. Sit, you know? That's what it says. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How's that sound? Very nice. Yeah, it's simple. Once you've done the PI and you've done it in sequence, then it becomes very simple. Exactly what is the central idea of this Mishnah? What's it dealing with? It's dealing with the evening time period of Kriyashma, beginning and end. That's it. Now, let's check out what is the beginning. 
right? What is, what is the, now the Mishnah introduces the case. What is the beginning of the evening time period? That's how the Mishnah starts. And what is, so, and in fact, the Mishnah says, Me'im Osai. From when on, from when, does is the evening time period begin? Me'im Osai, Kurin, Eshma, which is a text in the action, Darvis. Hey, couldn't have been more precise. Mm -hmm. you know, again, but really, isn't it true that Me'im Osai really means beginning and end? No, it, no. I thought Me'im Osai means from, from when, when and until when. No, it doesn't no. say until when. From when. It doesn't say Me'im Osai, the Ad Mosai. No, but I it thought that meant, word itself meant no, ad, both of them. Ad, or well, Shmuru is showing that is the end. Yeah, but Me'im Osai doesn't, Me'im Osai it means what? It doesn't say Zman Kriya Shema. It doesn't say begin. It says Me'im Osai. You have to, you know, Osai. pay attention you to made, the words. From when? From when? That's beginning. Can a person recite Kriya Shema and, and what? And fulfill no, his no, obligation. No. That's what it means. Yeah, I could say Kriya Shema all day. So what? And then, you know, <laughs> say. So Me'im Osai Kurin as Shema be Arvis and this is the fulfillment of a mitzvah. That's what it means. So then according to that, then, then it's only once it says Ad. Uh, yeah, exactly. You don't know yet. Exactly. We don't know. It didn't have to say Ad, but, you know, so that's how we know that it's going to describe the beginning and the end of the evening time period in which a person will now uh, be Yitzhah his mitzvah. Now, it, it seems obvious. I mean, I, I'm not machadish anything here. What I'm really, what's, what's my emphasis here? Thank you. Clarity. That's all it is. I want to exactly know what is being said, whether it's from the text itself or I have to go to the preliminary ideas. I don't want to be in the dark. That's all. Okay. And it's not a chidosh This isn't goinus or luyus. You know? Can we make one modification to your uh, CI? You mentioned it's the time period of the uh, Korea Shema. Beginning and end but of the beginning. The beginning seems much clearer. The more, the more discussion is of the ending. Yes. Uh, so I, 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 do we need to put that in our central idea? No, 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 not at all. I mean, because the ending is the is the beginning. That's where it's not. Work. Although the beginning also is really Machlech. I know, but I know. Ke ke clearly, you know, there's a whole bunch yeah. of them. But uh, clearly the Mishnah is not in any way referring to a Machlech for the beginning. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's so on. So, therefore, you know, when you learn the Gemara, then you say, wait a minute, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of different views. Well, yeah, when the audio comes in, it's all kind of it's true. You know, that's our mission actually. And so, you know, but listen, I, right now I need to understand what does the mission say? You know, then, remember I said there's post ideas? Mm -hmm. The post ideas could be what the Gemara says. Those are posts. Mm -hmm. And there'll be, even in the beginning, there are machoikas in terms of when it begins. But that won't be the mission idea, that'll be a post idea. Okay, great. So, what does it say in the mission? What? Do we need to relate now to who? But the Mishnah does not claim itself who is yeah. obligated. Is that from the pre preliminary ideas for me? You know, I want to tell you that you can you can you can learn the whole Shulchan and that can be preliminary. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You have it's you have to know where to stop and start. You don't want to get lost. You know, you want preliminary ideas, but you don't want you know the whole Megillah before it. You know what I'm saying? Also, you know what I'm saying? Also, it just becomes overwhelming. So you need to look at preliminary ideas, basically, that you really have to know for the clarity of the Mishnah. Fine. And then you have to exclude others, you know, or else. That, by the way, who is obligated, will be later on in the Mesechta. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? But right now, I don't want to get in. What, what you can do, what you're saying, is this. You know, when you begin to learn Rochus, you can read some of the introductions. And like I said, create a diagram, create a structure from the diagram. And what's the diagram going to have? What's the diagram going to have? The, right? The mitzvah of Kriyat Shema. That's how it starts. Right? What's the derivation or authority? It's biblical. Right? And then you're going to subdivide that into two major areas. One, the text. Two, the action. Those are the two major, you know? But besides that, there's a third thing called the subject. Who is obligated? You know, and then there's the time. But the time is really about Kriyashma, 
or which is really both, and so on. So you're going to try to form some type of a diagram. And then each Mishnah is going to deal with one category of that diagram. That's really what it's all about. Each Mishnah is nothing more than dealing with one category of a diagram. That's how you locate. So, ah, ah, who is really in the third parak, let's say, third mission or something like that, right? And then you could, in your diagram, you're right. Who, third parak, third mission. You see? So immediately, you know where to go. You can put it on. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of the CI, the central idea. That, the, that central idea could be dealing with who is obligated. Male, female, evid. Etc. See, and after we finish the whole masechta, or actually all three prokem on Kriyashma, you will have a diagram of what of all the categories that are critical of Kriyashma. Not only that, you'll know where all the halachas, which mishnah, the category halacha is in. You see, and bear all, you got the so you've organized not only the mishnayos, you organize the entire area called Kriyashma. And you've linked them together. So when you look at a diagram, you're not only knowing all the Mishnayas, you're also knowing the entire structure. And you're going to link the Mishnayas to the structure, not vice versa. Because the structure, the Mishnayas is disorganized. So it's, you know, so it's, it doesn't have all, it's your categories, your structure, that's the organizing framework. And you're going to link the Mishnayas to that framework one diagram and you will have the whole block in 15 minutes. There's something that I seem to get stuck in. Like yes. At least try. <laughs> yeah. So you want to when, 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 when I'm structuring so, when I'm structuring. Okay. So, so um, um, as far as subject is concerned. Yes. Who? Isn't it really that the subject is both a main category of itself, but it's also a subcategory because you have you want to know the subject in general, what you're dealing with, but then you also want to know the subject in relationship to the actual action. Yes, it is. That's why you'll take a look at the diagram, you see subject is a major category in and of itself. But also a subcategory. When you get into actually discussing the the process of doing the mitzvah itself. Yes. Well, like when, it, it, it's not really, a, it's really a major category. The subject, in this case, the subject, right, is action, right? Then there's the object of the action. The action is what? Kriya. The object is Shema. The subject is who, right? And then there's the concept of place, the concept of time. Right? Mm -hmm. No, right? And then there's the effect. Okay, yes? Yeah. And then you have the legal consequences. You know, have you been yoitsi or not? And so on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then there are many subcategories underneath, you know. Under text is what? Is uh, a, a discussion of what is the text, right? And under Kriya, there's a whole discussion of what constitutes a proper recitation. Can I mutter it? Vocalize it? Do I have to understand it? And so on. You see? So there's a whole bunch of halachas under recitation, which right. the Mishnah is going to deal with. You see, once you've categorized it, you know exactly every Mishnah where it is. You see? So subject is so, a So category. under recitation, there's also going to be, therefore, we're going to come on to the subject himself. No. As no. far as... No, because subject how is, is subject of it? the whole thing. It's a combination of action and object. You can't, you can't put subject in a recitation. It doesn't make sense. Because subject no, no, is a larger division than recitation. Right? So subject would be, so you could organize it that way. Subject, state of mind, which by the way there is, kapona, right? And then on the subject you have a whole bunch of subcategories. Nationality, right? mental state, state of mind, number, uh, and so on. Now, some are, they're no gear, some are not no gear. You know, what you're really looking at is a universal model of, uh, of, uh, of activity. That's really what it is, you see. For that, you know, you have to understand that 
the mitzvahs of the Torah are directed against different facets of man's behavior. In Zroim, it's directed against what? Remember we said that? What is Zroim? What, what, the Sivuim of Zroim, what are they, what, to what do they address? And they address what? The person's relationship to... No, that's always a consequence. No. Remember what he says that's Zroim? Mm -hmm. What does Zroim address? The mitzvah of Zroim, what does it address? Oh, to, permitting you to... Who? Permit, 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 permitting what? Permitting use of... Uh, it's an object use of permissibility. Mm -hmm. So it relates to what? To objects. Moi relates to activities. Can we or can we not do the activity? Notion relates to what? Relationship. That's a relationships. Man and his relationships. There's man and his objects. Mm -hmm. There's man and his activities. His man and his look at look at what's happening and his relationships. The whole seder, and then Nizikin deals with what? The interference. Man, what? The interference. Great man and the interference of his relationships. Has it? Right. Kachim relates to what? My ability to relate to God, mm -hmm. and I do it through the bais it's really what it is. Kachim is all about communication with the person. But the way I connect with him is through an offering. It's what, what else resembles Kachim? That's why, instead of, we, now that we don't have a Kobam Tomit, we have Shachas, that's what's, yeah. what, what, what does Fira do with Kachim? You don't want to sacrifice and the other's talking. No, because they're both forms of communicating yeah. and therefore relating to God. One is an action, the other is... Uh, well, one I do, what, what represents me in Kachim is the animal I sacrifice, right? What represents me in that is a direct act of communication. But essentially, it's the only Seder that has a relationship with God. But it's being done to the base of Mikdash, you know what I'm saying? So it fools you. It's not just that, you know, hey, well, I'm just sacrificing an animal. No. You know? It's really, and that's why Tfilo is connected Corbin Tikkun. You see? And Taharas deals with what? Uh, who? I don't, I don't get rid of the... No, no, no. Interfering. Interfering no. With what does Taharas deal with? Tuma, source of Tuma and... Transfer ob between... No. Object. Think large. Go up. It's a machisa. No. The flow of the uh, um, spirit keeping us on the side. That allows you to come on to objects and. Uh, said spiritual. The flow of spiritual. Uh, Taurus is all about my relationship with a spiritual entity called Tuma. That's what it's about. You see? So you can actually look at the whole Torah. I just boiled down to six ideas. Object usage, you know what I'm saying? Activity restriction or requirement. So one is all about objects, one is about activities, one is about relationships, one is about denial of relationships, one is about communicating with God, and one is about interfacing with a spiritual entity called Toma. That's it. That's, that's Tariyat Mitzvahs. Then there's other Tariyat Mitzvahs that deal with what? Midas. Avoida. Right? Service. What I have to do. What are the character traits I have to develop. You see what I'm saying? We look at the totality of Torah here. You know? It's a very valuable exercise. But what, what I've done is I've, I've given you the superstructure. You know? And now... If we connect all the six of them together, what do we arrive? What is the grand concept? Are you know the new bundle? No, in terms of all the halachas. Oh. The grand concept is all those commandments that involve all our dimensions, human dimensions, strivings. 
That's it. What the Bhagavan did is he looked through all the human dimensions of striving. You know? Well, there's your objects, there's your activities, right? There's your relationships, there's denial, and there's how you talk to me, or how you relate to me, and how you relate to a spiritual entity. The totality of all human strivings and dimensions, that's the Tanya. And each Seda deals with one specific aspect of our uh, striving or living. You see? So we've gone up. Now, once we've gone up, we can go down. down. <laughs> you see? And now we take a look at brochas. If you remember from last week, what was a brocha? A brocha is a verbal declaration that does what? That permits the usage of an object, right? By acknowledging the source of the object itself. That's all. What is Kriyashma? Remember I said, what, what's Kriyashma? Remember last week? What, who? No, what is Kriyashma? It's the verbal Verbal declaration. Of what? Of, of, of Hashem's uh, sovereignty. I need a... I need... No, no. Kriyashma is a series of belief statements. Okay. Uh, right? So that is foundational to Judaism. And to the whole acceptance of the mitzvahs. It's a foundational statement. Mm -hmm. I remember the six things you say, right? Yeah. right? Remember that? Yeah. What, what is that? It's a series of beliefs mm -hmm. which I need to declare, right? Mm -hmm. Before I accept his sovereignty, mm -hmm. which is mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. That's all that is. You know? You see? <laughs> and then what are the statements? And obviously the most critical aspect of the statements, right, is his sovereignty. One, that he is a melech. Two, that I accept his malchus. Two, and three, what is the acceptance of his malchus? The mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what Krishna is. Now that I've accepted the mitzvahs, I can now learn all about the mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm sorry, I still have to... What I was trying to say before, uh, for example, okay, let's say Shabbos. Shabbos. To a map, it's a malach. Okay, so now, so... I have, I have the category, the main category of subject, but then when I'm coming into actual activity, uh, uh, active, uh, forbidden activity, yeah. yeah, so I have, here's a person, he's going to do, let's say, Mulacha, oh, so he had Pesach Adas. I'm not going to include that in the main category of subject. That's going to be a subcategory in activity. No? No. What his kavana was? No. No. Maisa, no, no. What is the grand title of what you're talking about? What is the grand title? A activity, um... The activity structure. Yeah. What does the activity structure in Shabbos consist of? Subject. Uh -huh. Instrument. Action. On an object. Mm -hmm. that has an effect, takes place in a certain time, place. And is this a regular way of performance? Yes? Okay. What are the legal consequences of this? Huh? Yeah, I, I left out the uh, uh, causal relationship. But anyway, there are ten of these subcategories, there are ten categories that comprise this structure called the activity structure. Okay, but, but isn't that going to be besides the fact that I have a major category called subject? Subject is a category of the activity structure, isn't it? Yes. Here you are. So now what's the problem? The title to the structure is called activity structure. Subject is one of the categories. Here you are. On the subject, you have a host of subcategories. Nationality. Right, right. Uh -huh. and so on, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and so on. And each one of these things has halachic significance. All the categories have some type of halachic significance in terms of what? What does significance mean? Legal consequences. Are you chayef or potter? And so on. That's what an, an essential condition affects the legal consequence. You know, if it's essential, uh oh. If it's not essential, Okay, it's permitted, you know. Anyway, okay. Now, getting back to Shabbat, uh, to Brachas. So, isn't that Kriyashma then 
very super, the Kriya is very superficial. Who? The term Kriya of Krishna, isn't it very superficial? Why would it be superficial? It's reading it. Kriya is reading it. It's calling. Calling on. It's calling on Lord Shem. It's what I say. You read it. I would say it's superficial. You've done it. <laughs> Most people doubt and they just read it and that's the end of it. But that's <laughs> not the term <laughs> Krish. That's, that's not, not what we're supposed to do. <laughs> right. 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 So should, should there be a, a deeper word than Korea? No, no, because the mitzvah is to recite. It's not just reciting, it's the whole thing that... that, that they, well, it depends it. on what so, you mean by So, recite. on the recitation, right, <laughs> then you could write one of the, one of the, uh, the uh, subcategories, right, would be what? Understanding what you're reading. Is that a loch? Understanding. That would be a subcategory. Is that necessary to fulfill the next one? See? Everything is just in its structures. There's nothing nothing's missing, everything's complete. The key is that when you look at it, Kriyashma, you see the whole thing in front of you. And the source of each aloha, which is the Mishnah is itself. So you've linked the structure to the Mishnah. You see? So you see the totality. You see. Beautiful. And then you, it's incredible how clear that becomes. Yeah. Anyway, so we have, so when is the first, when do we read Krishna? The evening time period, when does it begin? And the answer is? When the coin. When is it? When, when's the evening time period? Well, there's a machlokas. No, not when in the beginning. Not in the beginning. Oh, beginning. beginning. Yeah. The time of the coin and enter through the truth. Yeah, which is? Six o'clock. Fine, okay, so the answer is says. The mission that happens to Right? Refer not to taste, to refer to some type of action. an action that a coin can eat his truma. Mm -hmm. And that is identical to taste. You know. So we obviously ask the obvious question. Why, Why don't you say says? What do I have to you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Who? The Gemara asked that question. Exactly. Yes, it's yes. an obvious question. And anyway, it's a, it is a say, you know. And the answer would be because it wants to teach you a halacha or two halachas. One, that is says. And two, that a coin can eat truma as soon as the Tzaysa Kham enters. What's the Chiddush here? You know? That he does not have to wait for the next day for a call before. So therefore, a coin can eat truma after what? After um, So what are we talking about? What do we talking about? So now we're talking about the Tahara process. Mm -hmm. so second come. stage. What's the first stage of the process? Fever. What's the second stage of the process? By coin. Taste. But what's the third stage? Kapora or Korban. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Kiddush is that after the second stage of the Tahara process, he can eat Truma. He does not have to wait to the third stage. There you are. So I, I've identified not just, well, I can eat trouble when it comes at night. I mean, you need to know more. You want to be clear. Let me eat at night. What are we talking about here? And the answer is, stages of removal of Truma. When can this man eat Truma? You see? First stage, second stage, or third stage? And the answer is, after the second stage, he can eat Truma. He does not have to wait for the completion of the Tahara process. Mm -hmm. That's an important chizosh. Sure. Because we would say, hey, you know, you've still got a, you've got a ways to go here. You know, it's you know, it's like explicit. What? Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's the chizosh. It's not just that. What it says, so everybody would say, well, the chizosh is that a coin can eat after it says. Yes? That's true. It's not the chizosh. Mm -hmm. The chizosh is in the middle of his tahara process. He can still eat trauma. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. How did I arrive at this information? Because I was careful to analyze what is the Mishnah saying. They just say, well, uh, he can eat, uh, but it says a cup, so what? Okay, nice. You know? But the real Kiddush is in the middle of your Tahara process? How can that be? Okay, there's a possible whatever. So yeah. when, when, when we learn a Mishnah, uh, so we have preliminary information for the yes. central. Well, then there's, then there's, when, we're not even at the central idea, although yeah. the preliminary uh, uh, information. Need to central. Yeah. yeah, so but then you also need preliminary information for the and it's like in this case with the Kohan and the Truma. Well so yeah, you have to have some preliminary to that. One, that a coin can eat Truma. 
Two, that coin cannot eat from a vista made. Three, you know what I'm saying? What stage of tar process? And then the Mishnah says, at the second stage. Yeah, see? You see that, that, that itself has preliminary. We don't anything about a coin or a stroma or the, the, the coin that became Tome. You know what I'm saying? These, these are ideas that we have to know even before because the Mishnah just jumps in. What we can assume is a coin that he eats Tome, that if he's Tome, he cannot eat Tome. The question is when? See, we, it, it, these are all assumptions that Rebbe made. That's why it's an intermediary text. You see, so on the first phrase already you've got three ideas. You, have to know also you see, so my yeah, prediction of 150,000 right. ideas, <laughs> we're getting closer. <laughs> but they're making together. That's of course they're here. Yeah. But you understand the Chiddush is that in the middle of his Tahara process, the man can eat his truma. But we also have to know preliminarily, we're yeah. talking about it for young. Yes. Well, so then, what's, what's it for young? Well, exactly. Yeah. Well, what's it for young? Well, it's for young is yeah. what? It's a stage of Tahara process. Mikveh, that's really what it is. And so on, you see, and, and so on. But what, what I'm saying is you need to analyze each idea. You know what I'm saying? So we that's the Chiddush. Do we know why? What was that? Do we know why the Rebunasi wanted to elaborate this halakha with the Zman of Kriyachim? That's a good question. So the only way to answer that, basically, is just ask what you've done, Nasi. You know, it, you know, look, I, yeah. you know, I could say... I mean, it sounds very strange You know what the Gemara like, says? Gemara, I don't know, put this here. He, he, wait, here's where you see the structure of Gemara. Yeah. Uh, what's the first question of Gemara? Tana Hekoi. Where's the Tana coming out of? What's the question here? What's the question here? That, that, why, why, why are we jumping? Why are we talking about yeah, so the What's the question? Here? It's a question of sequence. What's yeah, yeah. How can you right. tell me <laughs> when the time is? I don't even have to... I don't even know what it is. What? When? <laughs> I, I, if! Yeah. Are we jumping? You understand what I'm saying? So that question by the Gemara is a question of sequence. What do you mean? You're already, you're already to the halachas? I don't even know if there's a chiv here. Yeah, right. right. So the Gemara answers because I, I, you're crocoy, so the, 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 we're assuming that you probably learned the Torah first. Right. And then we can <laughs> skip it. <laughs> we can skip it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but. That was a critical question on sequence. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? So that justifies all the sequencing that we do and so on, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but look how you... So that, that's one aloha that we got to, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole concept of what's the chidush here? It tells us two things. Says, the coin that can, can eat through in the middle of this power process. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. There's a chidush in the structure, too. I mean, Rebbe is saying, look out, this, this connects to... Fundamentally, to every to Thank you for the mission. But you see what yeah, I'm doing? Yes. You see, what seems to be a very simple mission yes. really needs thinking. Until you know clearly each halach of what they say, and then you organize it under a central idea, and what's the, the area of this idea? What's the area? You know, what's the CIA? We know what the CI is, right? It's the area. What's the area of the CI? The CI is what? Central idea. E the center is of this mission. What is it? Beginning, of, the Beginning of end uh, of evening time period. Right. So what's the area? Tefillah. No, Tefillah, no. Krishna. I don't that's broad. That's the, 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 the oh, grand see. area. Here of Krishna. No. Zman. 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 The end of what? Zman. Time. Zman. Time. That Krishna is time connected. Mm -hmm. It's time mm -hmm. dictated. That's what it is. Zman. Mm -hmm. Time is the area. Evening time period, beginning and end, is a fract of time. Mm -hmm. You see? So in, when you formulate this diagram, you're going to have Kriyashma, one of the categories is time. Or you're going to have one category is called frequency, and another category is called time. And this fits under the category called time. That's how you're going to build up a whole picture. You see? It's, it's a mistake at this point to start connecting it to all the horizon. Uh, I, I look at it, I see the colony me mentioned and the Tarumba, that's obviously agricultural and it leads me to think it, of the agriculture is not really the No, no, but I'm saying it, it connects me to Zerayim and, and also the Shema, I think, start thinking of other brachot that we will do and what we learn in the, uh, in the Mishnah. Yeah, look, you know, again, you have, you have to decide how high you're going to go. Oh, you go. Exactly. I just did this because I wanted background. to show you, the, you know, because you mentioned, I just want to show you the, 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 the totality of the Torah's concern. Right. 
with an individual, his actions, his object, his relationships, then his relationship with God, right? And then the relationship with the spiritual entity. That's it. That's things all, simplify, all. narrow down. There's other things you could add later, and uh, yeah, yeah, to see the connection. Yeah, you know, you know, it's like a, it's like a, it's a you know, it's like a, it, it, you always have two things in your hand. You have a telescope and a microscope. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What am I using? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Am I using my telescope, which means to look out, mm -hmm. and the microscope to dive in? You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to decide. You know, when are you going to use these instruments, and how much? Yeah. You know, even a microscope, how much power? You know, like only magnification or, or electron microscope, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 You, after a while you get, you're used to it, you know, you're, you're intuitive, mm -hmm. you begin to understand what you need to do, you know, and so on, you know. But the, the idea is you always need a telescope and you're always in a microscope. Mm -hmm. You see, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when I just said the Chiddush here is what? Is the claim that he can eat in the middle of his talent process. Mm -hmm. That's a microscope, that's an analysis. It's the chidish here, you see, you know. But you have to deal with it to understand this mission. Yeah, sure. You have to, otherwise you're glossing over something. Yeah. So look how much we did just in the first phrase. Mm -hmm. We're not even in the year. You know, machlag is in the end, it's all right. This is a machlag. What? This is, as Rabbi Gavino really, is he can highlight the right? Well, that's later on. Yeah, probably later on, yeah. Exactly. That's necessarily. That's right. Now, do we have a, a, a Hezra on this block? Why? Why is this the Oh, that's, what's that called? Principle. 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 Now, do we have we a get principle? Of course, we didn't get to that. Yeah, of course we have. Why? I hope not. What determines the fact that as soon as Seis arrives, I need to, or the time, the time period begins. It doesn't say we have to do it, but the time period uh -huh. begins. That was the importance of a concept of a time period. Mm -hmm. that you actually have the time to do it. You have to do it right away. A time point would have meant now. Mm -hmm. A time period means you can delay. You still, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. The difference between the, you know, and so on. Yeah. So that's the principle. Which we why, have. But why is that the principle? That's only telling me a fact that that's when I have to do it. Yes. But it's not telling me. It's not telling me why the Torah tells me to do it at this time. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, There's two whys here. You know, you're into why the term. It's on the principle of the Mishnah. Of the, the, the Mishnah, the Mishnah is, is that. So the answer is going to be b'shach b'chol. Right. Yeah. Lying down. Right. That's what's going to be the answer, you know. Right. Because that posik will tell so, us the beginning, or rather, it will tell us the time period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lying down is a period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, or, and lying down itself is ambiguous. It could be going to lie down, uh -huh. or being in the position of lying down. That's uh -huh. uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the Chachomim, or Rabbi Eliezer, certainly, so you see? That's a principle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to ask me, why does the Torah want it to start, <laughs> you need to back to, you know, you're back into the Congress, you know, it's like, you know, why did they enact this law? And that, that already is Hashkaf from. You know what I'm saying? Why does the bunch of want that, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, and then you can, you can think of ideas, you know? The Torah won because what was Kriyashma? It was a declaration of beliefs. The Torah says there are two stages of man. When he's out and when he's in. When he's conscious and he's uh -huh. unconscious. Uh -huh. I knew that we, we, before you're about to enter unconsciousness, unconscious, you, uh, you need to have say the same belief. Uh -huh. You know, and when you're conscious, you're rising. Oh, you know. You know, so before you're about to check out, you need to make the declaration. Uh -huh. And before you're about to check in, in case you don't get on the Yeah, but I, I can see that. I mean, you know, that, it, okay, that's, I'm thinking, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. There's other ways of looking at it. You know what I'm saying? I need Kriyashma when I'm about to check out, means I'm about to go to sleep. When does the person go to sleep? In dark. So even when things are dark and I do not have no idea what's going on, Muna. Muna. So then I have to declare I believe in God. And so on. In the morning when I can see what's going on, you see. You have to recognize yeah. that. And so you see, that's another way of looking at it. There's different ways, but you know, I look at it. But, uh, you see, that's more hashkofic than halachic. Yeah, but it comes out of the halachic. Which yeah. is a beautiful thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Look, once so, so in other words, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be interested in that as far as wanting to know halachically then you, the dinam of Kriya I wouldn't, I wouldn't be thinking about why halachically what, what, why what's the why do I have to do it at this time I'm not going to look at that 
I'm not going to look at that. And right now, our interest in wanting to structure and understanding the Mishnah. Over here, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to be looking at the principle or wanting to find out what the principle is. Why do I say it this time? Not, I just want to know why. You will. No, you will. Because, no, you can ask what, what determines the boundaries of the time period. What's the principle? No, that's part of what you what we're going to analyze. Oh, that's but that, that. that's the b'shach b'cha. Yeah, exactly. That's the answer, b'shach b'cha. No, no, but what, the, what we were just now discussing is why did Hashem want that we say at this so time? So that's the realm of hashkafah. Yeah. yeah. And look, every, every halacha you can ask, why is this halacha so? Not in terms of its principle, but in terms of its hashkafah mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, why is it sitzis? Why is it shon? You know, it's so, yeah. all. But it, but that's outside the Mishnah. Mm -hmm. That's into hashkafah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Look, but look how much we're doing just from the Mishnah. Mm -hmm. You understand the concept of freedom in our ideas, which I've illustrated from Brochus and Yvonne's actually, mm -hmm. you know, which is so critical. Now you understand why Mishnah is so hard. Mm -hmm. And that you need to organize a structure first mm -hmm. with whatever skimpy information you have. So you can glean that from an introduction. Just do it. Just get the diagram out as much as you can, because that will give you, uh, uh, that will set you on a journey a long way off. Most guys just jump into the pool. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. So in Brochus is not so bad. But in other Masechus, forget it. Sure. Why well, we start with the eight zone and the eight zone and the eight zone? All the places to start. Yeah. Well, that, Marcus is not so bad. You know why? It makes such a Sanhedrin. No, because really Marcus, I think in some places, it really is a, is a part of Sanhedrin. Yeah, it makes up to Sanhedrin. It's still. Yeah, well, yeah, well, with exactly, yeah. Kate's Tell me what Marcus said first, before. Even to the order of it. Just tell me what Marcus well, No, what would your preliminary ideas be? That Marcus? Wait, Marcus? Yeah. yeah, what's the preliminary idea? The preliminary idea of Marcus is... Yeah. is uh, no. Uh, what is... No. What actions that there... What actions trigger... Actions that then... The no. Punishment of Marcus? Yes. That's certainly not. That's way. No. What's the f obligation? What's obligation to keep going. No. But you no. have uh, Edus. Who? But you have Edus. Ingo. The concept of an aid. One. Oh, because it goes on. What is thing. an aid? What, what is an aid? What what is an aid's function? Authenticity. Mm -hmm. No. What is the purpose of a witness? To warn. Who? To warn. No. no. Cla clarify. To clarify what? The reality of the situation. To who? To Bestin. That's it. Uh. The uh, aid them on the eyes of a Bestin. Well, isn't that the They don't know what happened. No, but, prove it. But that's so what an aid does, aid. an aid is the eyes of a Bestin. An aid uh, okay. will clarify what the reality is. Mm -hmm. One. That's what I meant by authenticity. It was an authentic thing that really happened. Oh, okay. But you forgot to be. It was imprecise. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know. What's number two? What's number two, Marcus? Uh, so we know with the concept of aid. How many? Who? How many? No, that, I don't want to get into the problem of aiders because that's not Marcus. Remember, we're headed toward Marcus. We're not trying to organize Sanhedrin. Do you know what I'm saying? So keep it brief, but <laughs> keep, it, keep it sufficient. It's the preliminary idea has to be sufficient, but not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, the the we get the market. The authenticity of the aid. Oh, exactly. What, what makes a valid aid? And the answer to that is? It's not contradicting. Well, it's not undermined. Who? It's not undermined. He undermined. was there to see it. That you could be Muslim in an aid. You have, you know, it's the, oh, okay. you, have, you can disprove his aidus. That's the, you need that as, that is a requirement for his testimony. He has to be able to be disproved or to be ref refuted, is a better word. Refutation by an aid allows, is a requirement for aidus in the first place. Yes. Now, what happens? 
How many ways can you refute? You can contradict, or you can't say you weren't there. Exactly. You can say either contradict his testimony, or you can contradict his ability to even say this. Mm -hmm. That's three. Four. Consequence. Exactly. What happens if an aid is proven or refuted? The second way, where he could never have said testimony, mm -hmm. right? That's number four, right? What's his Einish? And number five, what happens if you can't do that Einish? Mm -hmm. That's the mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's able yeah. to and you can't do it, so what do you do? So yeah, Marcus, that's when Marcus comes in. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you cannot fulfill the law of Hazoma. Mm -hmm. So that's a deviation of the mm -hmm. law. So the first mission of Marcus starts from a deviation. Mm -hmm. So the question is, excuse me, you know, what was the regular law? So that's why you have to go back. So, right there? so there are five ideas that have to precede Marcus. But once you do that, it's simple. You know, there's an aid, you know, what his purpose is, how he can be refuted, you know, what are the consequences of his reputation, right? Which is the Oynish. And what happens if that Oynish cannot be applied? Deviation. So the Mishnah says, Marcus, Loika Aborn, that's all. And, and so now we can go into the Mishnah. So the so Marcus is all about what? It's all about hazoma of edus. It's all about the fact that the requirement in order even to be made is it has to be refutable. What are the laws of refutability? That's what it's about. The first part of Marcus, the second period is all about exile. What's Golis all about? What is Golis really? It is a form of punishment. Mm -hmm. And then Marcus is Marcus. So the second and third paragraph is legal consequences mm -hmm. in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. And the first part is about refutability and mm -hmm. it's English. Mm -hmm. anyway, it's all Marcus. Now we go into the Mishnah. It's okay, you know, how do you refute? When do you refute? Where do you refute? And what's called a refutation? These are all details. Mm -hmm. You see? You see what I'm saying? Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, there a, wow. is there a pattern here, like uh, learning from the deviations, like developmental? Yeah, like I, I, yeah, I don't know if I make it a pattern. Yeah, I, I, I don't think because we did it in the comments so we did it. Mm -hmm. I, I, not yet. Huh? Yeah, I, you know, it could be really assumed that of course you know what an A is. You know what the requirements are, you know the concept of refutability, so what's the problem here? You want to tell you what happens if you can't do it. You know, obviously, Rebbe assumes that we're much bigger Tamid HaChomim than we really are. And this is the problem. We're not. That's why we, have we, need, we need what's called Mishnayis of Mishnayis. <laughs> you guys getting a sense of what we're doing here? Yeah. Yes, Now imagine if you did it to all Mishnayis. Nobody could touch you. And if you did it this way, where you have the PR, the freedom of the idea, right? And then the Mishnaic ideas, right? And then the central idea. And then you have all that organized into an incredible, all inclusive diagram. You'd be untouchable. And you remembered it. It's not hard. Because you remember the CI, you mm -hmm. almost remember the whole Mishnah. Mm -hmm. See, what's the CI of the first Mishnah? Central idea, what is that? Evening time period, mm -hmm. beginning end. So mm -hmm. automatically remember, ah, beginning, of course. Koyen, Tommy, it says, ah, and of course, there's a Machlikas. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, wait, then one more meal. And then what he wants to do is clarify Chachomen. Ah, psh, here you are. But it's simple. Once you grab the main idea, then it just falls into place. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you have to know verbatim, like we did it verbatim? No, it? no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't. don't. You need to know the concepts of the Mishnahis. Okay. The, the language will fall into place. Okay. Eventually. That's why do not memorize the language. Memorize the concepts. Mm -hmm. Understand the concepts. The language will fall into place. You know.